Hello and welcome to today's video. So I'm gonna be doing a series of videos which are kind of more tips related and advice on things that I've learned over the years of riding and doing octaries. Hopefully these are somewhat interesting for you. Please just let me know in the comments if there's anything you want me to cover and talk about and I'll see what I can do. So first of all, this video is my five tips for cycling your first 100 miles. hundred miles, a century, a ton, whatever you want to call it. hundred miles in the UK has very much been a target distance for many people to try and aim for. I would argue it's probably the equivalent of a marathon for cycling. If you work in kilometers, that's 160 odd kilometers, but I'm going to talk about it on the basis of hundred miles. When I first started cycling, which was probably a bit more seriously around about 2015 ish, one of the things I did was I signed up for the, at the time, the Prudential Ride 100, which was a 100 mile ride around London and Surrey, went into the Surrey Hills and then back into London. That edition that I did was actually cut shorter because of the rain and the weather conditions. So it ended up being Ride 86, maybe. There's a lot of stuff I did in preparation for that ride, which hopefully might be useful for you if you're considering taking on something like the Ride 100. I also think a lot of these tips apply if you just wanna try and hit that target of 100 miles. So hopefully this video is somewhat useful for you. Tip number one, plan your route. If you're not doing an organized event, plan your route. If you're planning your route, some of the things that are really useful to think about is a flatter route is gonna ultimately be easier to complete. You may not get so much recovery time on the descents, but you're not gonna force your heart rate really, really high on some of the climbs. If you're using one of the route planning programs, for example, Garmin Connect, Strava, Komoot, Ride with GPS, any of those, pay careful attention to the elevation as you plot your route. You can ride a flatter route, which is ultimately gonna be a bit more easier to complete that target. If your goal is to hit 100 miles, why not make it flatter? When you're planning your route, a few things that I've always done is, one option is to do a circular route or a figure of eight route, which effectively comes back to where you started. So you can stop and refuel, get some more water on board, get some more food on board, those kind of things. If that's not your kind of vibe, I would recommend trying to plan somewhere where you can have a good stop, maybe 50 or 60 miles in. Refuel, a nice cafe, nice coffee, get going again for the remainder. Tip number two clothing now for me personally there's two things that are non-negotiable that come with me on every single ride this obviously relates quite a lot to the uk because our conditions aren't great but i think this could be useful for other people around the world as well number one is a lightweight gilet something like this one from le Col. now the reason why i like lightweight gilets is they're a very good extra layer if it gets a bit chilly, it keeps the wind off your chest and they fold up so small that you can put it in your pocket easily and it doesn't really take up any room. A super lightweight gilet is a great additional bit of kit just to protect yourself if it does get a bit chilly on any kind of descents or any points. Great bit of kit. Number two is a base layer. I always ride in base layers. I know some people don't like base layers, but personally I really like them. It's an extra layer that helps wick away the sweat from your body and you can get various different thickness of base layers as well. This one from Le Col is a bit thicker, so kind of more of a spring, early summer sort of base layer. You can get long sleeve ones, you can get vests, you can get short sleeve ones. There's loads of different options out there, but I always ride with a base layer. I think it's a fantastic additional bit of kit to be wearing. So for me, Another thing that I always think is really important is having a really good quality set of bib shorts. I really like bib shorts that have the pockets on the side. These become fantastic as a way of carrying extra food. So, put some bars in there, put some gels in there, and it just gives you another way to carry some stuff while you're riding. I've never found these pockets annoying in any way, and they're also fantastic for like bikepacking trips and stuff like that put your phone in there, extra food, a packet of Oreos fits in there really well. If you've got a good quality set of bib shorts, they will have a good quality pad in them. Generally speaking, all kit at the top end is gonna have a very good quality pad in it, but something that is contoured and has an enough sort of ample padding is gonna really help you for comfort. 
Ultimately, the best thing you can do is have a bike fit, make sure your saddle works for your sit bones, but a good quality pair of bib shorts goes a long way. Of course, things like having clip-in shoes will help with your pedal efficiency, allowing you to push down on the pedals and pull up on the pedals. And also, if you're gonna do something like this, please wear a helmet. A pair of sunglasses also will really help because it just keeps the wind off your eyes. Tip number three, fueling. There's lots of options in fueling when you're cycling, but British Cycling's recommendation is one gram of carbohydrate per one kilogram of body weight. So say you weigh 80 kilograms, you should be taking on about 80 grams of carbohydrates an hour. 80 grams of carbs actually looks like not a lot of food when you understand cycling food. This sachet from Sturka is 90 grams of carbohydrate and you just put that in your water bottle basically. One of their rice bars, 50 grams of carbs. They've just now bought out these new gels, which each one is 50 grams of carbs. One of them is a mixed berry flavor and one of them is a citrus fruit flavor. They're really, really nice. You can also get gels which have caffeine in them, which might be quite useful if you're starting to feel a bit tired on your ride. Worth considering. One more thing to say is that if it's a hot day, put some salt in your drinks. It's gonna help if you're sweating a lot and will help stop cramping. Salt is a really good way to help you hydrate. Salt and water as a combination works fantastic. These particular salt tablets have a thousand milligrams of salt per tablet. Really, really good. If cycling nutrition food like that isn't your bag and you want something savory, for example, think of things like having a sandwich in your back pocket. I actually take roast potatoes sometimes. I think they're a fantastic source of carbohydrate. Roast potato in your pocket in a bit of foil, it's great. You can also look at things like jelly babies, wine gums, all those kind of things. Basically, make sure you're fueling properly so you don't have that dreaded bonk. Just having my coffee stop halfway through filming. Tip number four, make sure you take a simple toolkit. I think this probably sounds really obvious, but I'm just gonna make a point of it anyway. My Argon 18 Krypton Pro has in the down tube a storage compartment which holds this slug. Now, in here, I have everything I would generally take for a bike ride. I have, I have in here a Schwalber Aerodan inner tube. Normally I would probably take two, to be honest, but there's only one in here right now. A Dyna plug and spare plugs. If your bike tires are set up tubeless, I think this is the best product I've ever used for it. It's basically two things, you stab it into the tire, into your hole in the tire and it seals it. Really, really good and just easy to use. It's always good to carry a few spare plugs as well because you just don't know what's gonna happen on the ride. Worst case scenario, slap an inner tube in it. I always have attached to the side of the bike a pump. A small hand pump works really well, but for emergencies, I carry a CO2 canister inside this along with the little end piece for that as well. Tire levers, an essential to have just in case you need them. These little ones come with the, the Argon 18 slug thing, which is fantastic really. The same as I said with the CO2 canister end thing, that also comes in this set. You wanna make sure you've got yourself a small multi-tool as well. This little one comes with this setup as well, which is just a Topeak one, I think. It's got a couple of Allen keys on it and a screwdriver and a star end piece, which is kind of enough to cover you for almost anything you would need to. Couple of patches. I personally quite like the pre-glued patches. Some people don't, just because they're quick and easy. Just take a set of patches. They, that weighs nothing, so why not just put it in your bag? In here, I also have an Apple AirTag, which is ultimately for my own peace of mind, knowing where the bike is when I'm traveling, etc. Just a nice thing to have, doesn't weigh anything as well. And then the last tool to mention, which I think is one of the best tools I've had for years now, is this one from Wolf Tooth. It's basically a chain breaker reattacher thing. And you can put in here some chain links, like so. So if you snap your chain, you can easily fix and repair it with the chain links. This is a great tool. I actually found out about this first probably well, several years ago when I was in Girona with one of my mates and I snapped a chain. He had this tool on him and we managed to get me going again instead of jumping in a taxi. Really, really useful. So that's kind of my small toolkit that I'd have on the bike. 
Everyone obviously has certain things they prefer to take and don't want to take, but that for me is a great little setup that I have most of the time, and it's perfect really. Slug. Last but not least, tip number five, pace yourself. What I mean by this is don't go out too hard, take it steady. 100 miles is really far when you look at it on a map. Something that might be really helpful for you is to start working with a coach. I work with Ken Buckley, who runs a coaching company called BPC down in, near London. But some things that can really help you as well is using heart rate or power as a way to kind of gauge your effort. Most bike computers now will come with a heart rate monitor, which you can strap onto yourself. Some smart watches will come with a heart rate monitor on them as well. Power meters generally now are coming in the forms of crank sets and crank arms and pedals. If you don't have access to a power meter or a heart rate monitor, a good way to kind of think about it is when you're riding along, can you talk to someone comfortably? But you might just be a little bit out of breath while you're talking. That's quite a good way to pace it. That or easier is a good way of thinking about it. If you can't talk to someone, you're probably going too hard to be honest. Make sure you pace it on the climbs, take it chilled, and most importantly, have fun. Enjoy the ride, enjoy the experience, and maybe you might wanna do another 100 miles soon. Hopefully this video was somewhat useful. Please like, subscribe, and comment. Let me know what you think, and please drop a comment of any other things you'd like me to cover. Thanks for watching, I'll talk to you soon.